welcome to this, the July 5th uh, meeting of the Economic Development Committee for the city of Arcata. We'll start with the roll call. I'm Serge Mahalo. I'm here as Humnath Panta. Right here. He is not here. Okay. Travis Kuna. Also not present. Okay. And Walt Geist. Present. Leah Amanda Hickey. Present. Linda Zespu. Present. And Monique Molina. Present. Right. Welcome, everybody. We'll start with uh, oral communications. This is provided for people to address the Economic Development Committee or submit written communications of matters not in the agenda. At the conclusion of the oral and written communications, we will respond to the statements and any request that requires ED action will be set forth by the EDC for a future agenda or referred to staff. Um, it looks like we do have one. So hold on one second. Call in user one. Can you unmute? Okay, call in user one. You should be able to talk now if you unmute. Okay, let's, you wanna to go to Jane and then try and go back. Absolutely, that sounds good. We've got some written communications from Jane Woodward, um, comments for the July 5th Economic Development Committee meeting. You think Jen should I just read them all for us? Um, no, those are for the agenda item. Um, but it sounds like she wanted to talk item. to something that's not on the agenda. Know. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jane. <laughs> yeah, I had because he started talking. <clears throat> I did send those. I'm sorry they're so late, but there's no way I'm going to fit those into three minutes. Um, if that's what you're going to do, so rather than my reading them, I think it might be better if you read them during my period or we give you a few minutes to read them um, at some point here uh, rather than my sitting here and reading them to you. But <clears throat> the thing I want to emphasize is, and I don't know how many of you got an opportunity to listen to Ben Noble talk about the um, form-based code, but if you did not get a chance to do that, I would highly recommend it because you would then understand what many of the issues, what how we're going to be trying to address the issues, and you'd understand the legislative requirements <clears throat> that are being imposed on us in terms of from the state. And that's very important to understand the circumstances under which we may need or will need objective standards. <clears throat> and that's basically what the form based code is. So in any event, um, I don't know how you want to handle it when we get to the topic, but you have my written comments and I don't want to just read them to you. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. And unless you want me to, I'll be happy to do that if you'd like. Whatever works for you. Just let me know when the time comes. Thank you, Jane. Yeah, they were very thoughtful comments. Yes. I read through them. And appreciated. Thank you. Yeah, I'm so I'm just sorry it took me till 20 to uh, five to get them to you. And I thank Jen ever so much for <laughs> multitasking and getting them out to you. So thank you. Anytime, Jade, not a problem. Thank you, Jen. Yeah. Okay. So let's try, I guess let's try again. I've asked our call in user, can you unmute yourself? I can't. Do you guys remember yeah, how to do it? Is it like star? This There's like Fred. a. This is Fred Wise. Oh, we can hear you, Fred. Go ahead. OK, thank you, Jen. Um, I wanted to thank everyone on the committee uh, for your service. Um, I know it's a lot of work and I appreciate your what you add to Arcata. Um, as Jen knows, I have a website, Arcata numeral one dot com. It's Arcata one dot com. Uh, I would like to put up, I, right now I have one of your meetings on there, the May uh, 12th meeting where Jen 
Jennifer uh, spoke, uh, gave her presentation. Uh, that's on there right now. I would like to put more meetings on there. Um, there is a transcription on there, but it's not complete yet. And um, I've been talking with Jen about that. Um, the presentation that she gave, I thought, was very instructive. I've been recommending it to a lot of people. I feel that it, it um, allayed a lot of the fears and concerns about the Gateway Plan and the role of business uh, in the plan. Um, the, um, uh, Jen has heard some of this before. Um, I did have some objections to what she said. She, uh, she said that there's, um, it's just uh, that 4% of Arcata's jobs are in the Gateway Plan. That sounds very low to me. She gave a figure of 376. Uh, I, I also think that's low. Uh, just on the block where Haleashi and North Coast Children's Services, the pub, is I think there's probably 150 or 200 jobs right there. Um, but the the idea of just counting the jobs, I think, is not what's important. It's, it's uh, what the jobs bring to the area. So um, if you take out such as the university and remove the city jobs, and look at jobs that have either entrepreneurial, if you want to look at it that way, or what I look at is people who are jobs, businesses that bring money into the area. Um, I used to be involved with North Coast Children's Services. Uh, they budget is over $12 million. So it essentially is federal money that, and state money that they bring into the area. That's uh, crucial. I don't have to tell you. You know all this stuff. Um, in terms of the jobs that maybe people say the jobs won't be lost by the gateway area, um, I guess this, this continue, I can continue this later when we talk about the gateway itself. Um, but that's, that's it. I just want to pre express my appreciation to you for the work that you're doing and as well as tell you that my website is very open if you like to write articles or anything of that sort. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks very much. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. All right. Well, if that's all the public comment, we'll move into agenda item number three, which is the approval of the minutes from the Economic Development Committee of June 7th. Um, is there anyone that moves to approve those minutes? I can move oh. to approve. Go ahead. Well, yeah. you want a second? Oh, yes, I'll second. Yeah. Oh, perfect. So I hear motion to approve the minutes from Amanda and a second from Walt. Um, all in favor? Linda, would you be in favor of that? Aye. Perfect. And Monique? Aye. I'll be in, in approval of it as well. And Walt? I guess you're in approval approved. already. Yep. Amanda, of course, approved. So if that's okay, Jen, we'll move on to the next item, um, which is to consider, which is business and action items. And item A is to consider the gateway area plan and make a formal recommendation to the city council. Yeah. So I'll just give you guys a little bit of brief background. I mean, I think you guys are pretty well aware of the gateway plan and we've had multiple meetings talking about it at this point. Um, but basically staff is responsible for providing the council, the compiled recommendations and a formal staff recommendation. And there's different ways that this can happen. Basically, um, there could be grammatical or minor changes that you wanted to, you know, that you'd want to recommend and going through it with a fine tooth comb and that's completely fine. But then there's also going to be some substantive recommendations. And so the way that, you know, if you're going to alter an existing policy or, um, make changes or suggest a new policy, those would be more substantive changes rather than just some minor edits, um, you know, making a little clarifying change or something like that. So the way that we anticipate bringing this forward is, um, and also understanding that some of these may be uh, conflicting, is the substantive changes that don't have any conflicting recommendations will be incorporated into the element and then will be identified with an underline or a strike through they'll be annotated by what the source is. And that's kind of what that would look like. 
And then changes that have conflicting recommendations or they don't comport with the goals and objectives of the element will still be summarized in a spreadsheet with a staff recommendation and policy balancing analysis. So that's how this will go forward. And that's why we're going back to all of the committees to go through. And, and I've just highlighted the employment area. That doesn't mean that's the only area you guys can discuss. You can definitely make changes or, or make recommendations for changes in any other area. I know that we've sort of focused on that, but then there's also some, I believe there's some policies in the, in the land use section, which is policy chapter one, um, as far as relocating existing uses that are incompatible with the plan that we've discussed. So I just want you guys to be aware that it's not, I was really careful to leave it real open so that you guys can have a discussion about the whole document. You don't have to discuss just the employment section, but I did attach that because that one's the most relevant, I felt like, to our committee. Um, but you're more than welcome to discuss any of any of the other elements as well. Um, I'm going to pull up a document. And, it, and just to be clear, too, we're going to be doing this with the committees, the planning commission. All of this is kind of going through concurrently. So you won't necessarily see all of this incorporated at the same time, because we're doing we're doing this all kind of well at the same time. <laughs> um, and I want to make sure you also know that if you decided to, you could form not at this meeting, we would have to schedule a, a separate meeting, but you could form a subcommittee to look into this further. We can bring this back to your August um, EDC agenda to discuss it again, to discuss it further. So you have a lot of different options options here. Um, and we could do a special, we could do a special meeting to dig into it as well if you guys decided you wanted to do that. So just bringing this up that you have a lot of different options, <clears throat> excuse me, as, as a committee. So I'll share with you what I've created to kind of get the feedback. And I also put some just thoughts that I had heard from the group. Um, they're not necessarily recommendations. And this was the thing is that you guys haven't actually made a formal recommendation on anything except the implementation measures. The focus, I think there were five of them that you guys did back last year. So that's the only formal recommendation that's been made. And so what we're asking for at this point is if there's something that you really would like to see edited, changed, um, enhanced, making those recommendations so that we can share that with um, with the Planning Commission and the Council. So, but bear with so me I here. do have a quick question about yeah. this. But to the extent that other groups are making changes, which we don't have the opportunity to review, that we may or may not have input on, how is there, is there a so, final draft where we- Yeah, there will be. So they're that? not making, I, I should go back. They're not, these are recommendations. And so that's why there's gonna be that strike through and mm -hmm. then there's going to be ones that don't necessarily fit or are conflicting let's let's say you guys come and you say we want all streets and transportation says no we want all bikes <laughs> okay i'm just throwing that out there as, as a funny one yeah. it's not not real obviously but let's say that that's what happened we would put those into a separate document that would then it would still be attached it would still go to the city council so they could review that and go we want all bikes we this this needs to be incorporated in there or or whatever. So all of that information is going to go to city council because they're going to be obviously the body that decides what changes are officially made, like what actually goes into the document. Um, and we are going to be bringing these, it's my understanding anyway, from the discussions that I've had with our staff is that we are going to be bringing these um, to the different bodies as we go. So we're gonna try and compile everything and bring them bring them to different bodies. Um, I believe planning commission has been asking for this as well. So that's kind of my understanding of how it will work. Um, hopefully I'm relaying that in the in a correct way. But yeah, so you may make a you may make a recommendation and let's say another committee makes the same recommendation. Obviously we're gonna highlight that as both committees really made the same or similar recommendation um, because it's all happening sort of at the same time. And you guys are on, you know, your committees at one different time. You may not go to the forest committee or creeks and wetlands or whatever other committees may be, you know, making recommendations. So, and there may be conflicting recommendations, you know, not all of our committees have the same goals. So that could happen too. Well, and that's exactly what I was trying to drive at. It's like, so if somebody, so right now it just says mixed use, like bikes and, and cars. And we look at it and go, bikes and cars is fine. And then somebody else comes along and says, we want all bikes. Well, we wouldn't have necessarily objected to all bikes and cars, but if you strike that and put in all bikes, um, yeah, suddenly- so 
it's not going to be, yeah, we're not going to strike yeah. it. That's going to be on a different, anything, anything like that will be on a, they'll be summarized on a different spreadsheet with a staff recommendation and policy balancing analysis. So it'll get there. It'll be, it'll still go to the, to the city council. They'll, they'll eventually see it, but it won't be incorporated because gotcha. yeah. Exactly. So it'll just be a series of recommend, like these are, this is what it is. This is all the input we've received. You know, you can yep. kind of take it with a grain of salt, figure out what you want to do. Okay. Exactly. Good and then, as, and then that way as, we get the yeah. feedback and we can, we can put together the final draft. Perfect. So, yeah. So let me share with, with you what I've got right now to help get you guys started on the conversation. Okay. Can you see that? Yes. So I sent two attachments. This land use um, policy was not in, I didn't attach it. I sort of, after reading through these, um, after reading through these, I made, I just got to the understanding that I really should have included this because this was one of the things that we did talk about quite a bit when we went over what um, kind of businesses in the gateway. So I wanted to make sure to include it in, in here so you could take a look at it. And if you had some recommendations for proposed, you know, for proposed modifications that that was there too. And again, you have the opportunity to review. And if you have other policies that you would like to, to look at or to um, edit in any way, or if there's different policies, new policies that you think should be included, feel free to, to, you know, talk amongst yourself and we can look at those too. Um, but these are just the ones really that these three are the ones that are in the employment section. And I just pulled them out here so that I could jot down notes if you guys wanted me to. Jen, can you make them, can you make your screen bigger since this wasn't, I did read what was attached on the agenda, but I don't recall. Yeah. So up here, these are just some kind of things that had come out of other meetings that I heard in other meetings mm -hmm. that I wanted to just sort of refresh you guys with that. These are some of the things that I heard from you guys, but you didn't make recommendations on them, obviously, but they were just things that sort of came up in some of our other meetings. And so I just threw these out there just so you'd have a kind of talking point, some place to start as a group. Um, and then the three, or I'm sorry, the four policies, these three are the ones that were in the attachment under the employment section that I gave you. And this first one is under land use. So it's on page 46, if you've got a copy of the gateway. And let me know if you want me to scroll down. Love it. <clears throat> I think one thing that we had talked about that I didn't want to miss on there would be the idea of creating some kind of equity-based investment um, opportunity in the form of apartments or condominiums. Oh, I think, well, that's kind of what I was getting at here, but it wasn't quite yeah, that. Yeah, you know, interest in supporting community land trust, housing co-ops, maybe um, apartment style or uh, condo style where everyone can own a smaller piece. Uh, okay, I get what you're saying. Condo opportunities for ownership. Yeah. Or just basically opportunities for ownership. Opportunities. It's kind of the... Is that opportunities for more diverse ownership, aka huge developer doesn't own it, but you own your gotcha. Company. And I'll put this in red so you can see the changes that I made. This is more like chasing the rabbit around the city of Arcado website. Um, <laughs> municipal code, budget, and plans, but there's no gateway plan. Current project doesn't have gateway plan. Where is the gateway plan to go back and review it? I mean, I got it somewhere in my emails but hold on I'll find hiding in the city of Arcata. don't you love it current projects <laughs> it's, it's reforming half the city it's it's on the main page the link to it's on the main page so if you go to city of Arcata, you'll see the second item down is Arcata gateway area plan update and if you click on that here i'll show you my screen here yeah you're gonna Arcata have gateway area plan update page. yeah on that main page and click on it here and that'll bring you to Wait a second. Can you go back one? Because I, so this is. It's the very main page. So if you just type in city of Arcata. Um, oh, I see. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. My hot link doesn't take me to that. It takes me. Some, somewhere else. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Then go here and click on this and, and it'll you get you right to it. it. Okay. Perfect. Oh, 
Oh, Monique, I think you're muted, but I see you're talking. Oh, I was just reading. Um, oh. What is it? What are the um, zoning implications? Is it just uh, and for the lead uh, creamery district right below your. Um, oh, this one here. Yeah. So, yeah. So basically the zoning, the creamery district has its own uh, zoning overlay right. right now. And so that that will be removed. But we want to make sure that the creamery district itself is identified um, in the plan, because when you look at the maps in the plan right now, we talk about the gateway as being the heart of this entire plan, but it's not identified in any of the maps. And so I think just highlighting, making sure that it's highlighted, that that is, you know, it's, you know, it is its own area and making sure that that's clear in okay. the gateway plan. That makes sense. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah. Well, I think this is a huge, huge topic that is well deserved to take some time and, and really um, put our thoughts into. I think Jane kind of, with her notes, really said it pretty eloquently. Um, if it's okay, I can read. Did you guys get a chance to see Jane's notes for the, from the public comment section? Yes. Yeah, and I'll just say, Jen, I think you did a really beautiful job of condensing, um, you know, the the points that have emerged that are important to folks and to these, these bullets that you have here on the top and um, just acknowledge Jane's point about form-based code was well taken. Um, certainly has been uh, buzzy for the past 30 years and um, bring, you know, a commitment to that, I think, brings our planning practice uh, to date. Um, and so I think, yeah, just a question, of, I, I think our discussion may be useful to uh, chart a path forward in terms of formalizing our recommendations and how we can all work together um, to, yeah, incorporate this either in line edits in the draft or separately in the, the spreadsheet. Yeah. Uh, when uh, was there a, a city council meeting in which they have designated? No, no, it hasn't been scheduled yet. It hasn't been scheduled yet. There, there was supposed to be a special meeting on July 12th, but there were scheduling conflicts. Um, it sounds like on both the planning commission and city council side. So we're trying to find a date that will work for everybody. It's likely going to be, I would say sometime in August or September, but I really don't know. So it hasn't, we haven't had any new dates floated yet that I'm aware of. So hopefully sooner rather than later. So if it's something that you guys did want to have um, more of a discussion on um, and, and possibly form a subcommittee, we could look at scheduling a special meeting where you could form that subcommittee and then have that discussion between now and our August meeting, and then come back with some you know, pretty targeted recommendations at the August meeting. I think that that would be fine. I fully anticipated having this come up again in August. So this was just sort of the initial conversation and I'm really glad that we're having it. Um, we didn't have, I, I wasn't able to get uh, a speaker. I know we had talked about having SBDC um, come. And so this actually gave us more of an opportunity to have a discussion at today's meeting because it gave us more time. So I really just wanted you guys to start digging into it a little bit and having the conversation. And then um, if you did decide, I should have worded it correctly on the, on the, um, on the agenda so that you could form the subcommittee, but I didn't even think about that at the time. I'm sorry. I was going on vacation the next day and I frantically sent the, sent the agenda to Kayala to post. So. Right. So it sounds like we have about a month to turn to get consensus among ourselves about what we want to formally recommend. And we would possibly have to take the additional step of, of scheduling a second meeting just so that we could, you know, work together, right? To so you could, yeah, so you could form a subcommittee to, to work on this offline. You know, you would have three of you that would be committed to, to kind of digging into it and then bringing it back to the larger group at the next meeting. I think that's, if, if you decide you wanted to do that, that's what I would recommend. I wouldn't recommend necessarily waiting to the August 2nd meeting to form that subcommittee, just because I think that, you want to make sure that your your thoughts as a group are are input and included. And I just don't know, you know, at this point, really what that what that timeline 
is looking like. It seems like um, that meeting is still sort of up in the air. So, so if I understood your comment earlier, we cannot we cannot form the subcommittee because it's not on the agenda. It's not on the agenda. So we have to make a recommendation to have a secondary meeting a, at least a week from now. Or is it, what's our notice period? Three um, days? No, I think I don't think it needs to be a week. I think um, I could look at what our actually let's see what's right here. I think it's I think it's shorter than that. I think it's twenty four hours actually, uh, twenty four or forty eight hours. So we could do it fairly quickly if you guys all had a time that you were available. Um, my only concern would just be the people who are absent, whether or not they would want to be a part of this um, subcommittee, because mm -hmm. three of us is, you know, most of us. So, yeah. Anyways. Well, we we would have the, that time, the 24 or 48 hours to notify them that we were yeah. going to. That we were going to hold a special meeting. Yeah. It's just whether or not they're going to be available. I don't know. And from, like I said, from Humnoth's, it sounded like summer was going to be a little hectic for him. So mm -hmm. I'm not positive that we're going to get a response back, but I don't, I don't know. So we can yeah. try. So I, this is where Robert's kind of falls apart for me. So if we, and I'm not even sure that's the applicable thing, it may be just the, the Brown Act kind of stuff, but um if we shoot out a thing that says, hey, we want to have a meeting for this, are you interested in being on it? That doesn't cross any lines because that way. No, but I could say we don't have to. I don't think we have to necessarily say it that way. I could say doodle poll. When are you available? We're going to have a meeting. And if you're interested in being on this subcommittee, you definitely want to attend. Yeah, I well, that's my and that's my underlying question is if somebody wanted to be on it, but now we're scheduling this meeting while they're out. Yeah. Um, that they couldn't be on their meeting, but they may want to be part of the subcommittee. And I, I just want, I don't want to preclude someone with such short notice for a meeting from being on the subcommittee. That's, I guess, what I was getting at. And I'll just to add a, a point on that too, where I, I don't, this is so the crux of our work or, or these kind of recommendations right on plans like this. It's, it's so central um, that I, it just kind of feels to me like probably everyone has input. So I'm wondering if there's another format besides subcommittee that's available for us to make yeah, sure. Yeah, we could do, I mean, we could talk about this tonight until seven because okay. we have, we have two hours worth of meeting tonight that we can go through and talk about it, which is, like I said, part of the reason why I decided to go ahead and put it on the agenda because we had such an open, open meeting. Um, we could also schedule another special meeting for all of our members and dig into it again at that special meeting. Um, so yeah, there's lots of opportunities. So if everybody is really interested in participating and wants to, wants to do that, we can also do that and happy to schedule another special meeting. Um, I don't have a ton of, I think I don't have, we're going to all the committees. So I have to look at my schedule because there are multiple different committees that are happening this month. So, but yeah, we could definitely make it work. You yeah, can also no, I would... express my preference that we hold a special session in two weeks or so with all of us present and everyone comes prepared with their line edits and recommendations and we just go through one by one. Agreed. Yeah. Took the words right out of my mouth. Everybody like that idea? Yeah. 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 And so it's time for it. And does everybody have a copy of the gateway plan or you can get one from our okay because i think that'll be the best thing is to kind of have that and really go through it and we can just i mean we could start at the land use and just go from you know go all the way through because i know you guys were really interested in transportation as well and so i think it's important to you know if there's if there's policy language in there that you wanted to look at to be able to do that too that was one of the um one of the recommendations i think was alternative transportation as far as implementation measures. So I, you know, just throwing it out there that that might be another, another spot worth looking at, but we could go through the entire thing if you wanted to. Um, what do you guys have access to your calendars and here, I'll stop sharing this for a second and I'll pull up my calendar. So um, Thursday the 21st would work if that works for everyone. Works for me. 
the 20th, we have city council and the 19th, um, we have creeks and wetlands. So those won't work. Yeah, no, Thursday sounds great. How's everybody else looking on the 21st? Yep, I can do it. Monique, is that working for you? Um, and Linda? At six, at six o'clock, same time, or five o'clock? At mean? five o'clock. Yeah, well, I can do it. That okay, works. that works. And Linda, does that work for you? Yes, I thought I... Oh, I saw. Okay. I don't know if that makes it official, but. <laughs> well, that's helpful. At least that way I know. And, and then again, we can reach out to Travis and Humnoth and let them know that, hey, we're going to be meeting and, and really digging into this more, going through each of the policies. And that way you guys can all come back really prepared and we'll have that full, you know, two hours to go through the document. It's right after um, our HLC meeting. So I'll just double check and make sure that she's that uh, Delo is able to keep that to an hour so that we can log on right at five. But if not, it may need to be 530. So I'll, I'll let you guys know just to make sure that they have enough time to dig into it too. Because I think that's what they're going to be going over at their meeting and they may need longer. So, um, but that's fine. We can also, we can also put it together on a different, on a different uh, link for Zoom. So do you guys um, want to spend any more time today looking at it or do you guys want to oh, go yes. back? I think that I okay. think that makes sense. Just to hit some high things. Yeah. You know, just take a look at it, maybe, you know, acid test some of this stuff, at least what you put together and other things that have kind of come up. And we can talk about um the the material that was submitted. I think that's also appropriate since it develop, talks about a resource. Um, I have just a very basic overall question. Um, what is the implementation budget for this? Overall for yeah, I mean, does it 50 bucks or 5 million or it's not 5 million. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was. Hold on. I'm pulling it up. Oh. And. And, and what and how is it allocated? And if you could send that out to us, that would be very helpful. Yeah. I can um, because there are certainly things in here that, you know, I mean, I just right off the top, you popped your, you removed your screen that you had up there. Um, but it talks about providing assistance to relocate businesses. Oh, so I'm sorry. So, yeah, no, I thought you were talking about overall for, for actually doing this. Oh, you yeah, know, that's what have, I, mean. I mean, yeah. No, we don't have, yeah, <laughs> I, we, we have a budget to, to actually prepare the, to prepare the four base code, to prepare the gateway plan. But outside of that, these all of these implementation measures, we would have to find funding for. Now we have some funding sources for business assistance, that type of thing, because we do have a business assistance program. So we have those programs in place, but there's gonna be additional, additional measures that we're gonna have to look for additional funding sources for. So, yeah. Okay, and so in that light, um, you know, there are things that we are going to recommend that cost money. Right. Um, so I think we should be rather pointed about that um, to the extent that there are expense items, because I just, if you pop up the thing that you had up earlier, mm -hmm. um, I'm talking about relocating businesses. Yep. Um, you know, that is not free <laughs> on a lot of levels. Um, right. And so, you know, path of least resistance, what are you doing? Is it corporate welfare? I mean, there's a lot of things that kind of fall into that um that gets pretty mushy pretty fast um and but i do think that you can't just tell people that you know we told you your house could be painted orange and you just did that and now we want it painted yellow um that's not cool so right. um anyway that was my something that i think is is important that we actually quantify because you you do i mean this Part, there's two things in this that, and I don't want to get on a soapbox here, but there are two two really com important components to this to me. The functionality of it and the deliverability of it, because they're not the same thing. You can come up with a great plan that, you know, that's, hey, we're going to sail the seven seas and put that thing into a rock on day two. Um, and, and you don't want to be in a situation where we, you know, go into it all bright eyed and bushy tailed and find out that the real world hurts. Um, and I just, I want to be very mindful of bringing people along so that you have the least amount of resistance possible. 
Um, and a lot of that you're going to get with ambiguity. And this is chock full of ambiguity. Um, and I realize that's where you have to start. I mean, you can't start with specifics. You're never getting anything done. But um, but I do think when you're talking about fairly targeted pre-existing interests, because the interests of the people who will be able to develop are not specific at this point, right? This is a future need, a future want, a future profit margin. But the people that you are rezoning already have skin in the game, and they're stuck with whatever we come out with. And I think I think those people have earned the right to have a certain amount, as many knowns as we can provide them. Um, and that will grease the skids for progress, as it were. Anyway, that's my soapbox. I'm going to get off of it now. Amanda, you have your hand up. Yeah, just to piggyback off Walter's comment, which I think um, something that we've talked about kind of ambiguously is is what the actual like uh, process of redevelopment and the you know the property disposition and everything that has to happen to actually redevelop these parcels and um, you know it's something that I've worked a lot in contexts that are far more blighted and so you're working off properties that are on city rolls. What we have is really different, you know, private ownership in most of the gateway area, so it's going to look different for us. And my understanding of the plan is that it's mostly you know incentives, it's not directives to redevelop, right? And so just you know, I think there's a lot of worry about change. There's also risk that nothing will happen fast enough. <laughs> um, so I think it may be some clarity either that we can just have a little session here in committee or, or in some other format about what that could look like as, you know, developers come forward with plans, um, you know, to get a little more clarity on that might also assuage some of the fears that the private owners have in that space. Yeah, so that's actually something I can I can talk to a little bit, um, and it's going to be much I think more clear in the form based code. But the proposal right now is um, at least the understanding that I have is obviously some of the smaller projects will be able to go through that ministerial review. Um, but even the the larger projects, those would still happen at an actual hearing um, where decisions are being made and people can voice their you know, concerns and that, that type of thing. So those things would still have that opportunity. Um, there is a path forward for that, um, even with a form-based code. And I think it would be really, really important for you guys before we have our next meeting to listen to um, Ben's uh, YouTube or to watch Ben's YouTube. I don't see it up on our YouTube page yet, but I will make sure that it gets up there beforehand. So I'll send you guys the link to it because I really think it'd be important for you guys to, to watch that before we meet. I think that that will help with some of these questions, um, and kind of discuss some different, different, um, pathways for projects and, and how those could look in the form-based code. I think a lot of, um, and I've heard this there's been a lot of talk about this, that the gateway plan came forward, but the form-based code did not yet. And so people were like, a lot of the questions that probably would be answered with a lot more detail would have come out in the form-based code. And so if you had both of those to look at, we might not be having this anxiety <laughs> in some ways, um, but that's not how it worked. So this is where we're at. And I think that that, that, um, that presentation is really important for you guys to watch before, before we meet next time. And while like, to prep you for going through the document. So I so. survived the strategic plan for the county. Um, so you think you can survive my, this one too? Well, I worked with it with my ex-wife <laughs> and I will tell you, it was brutal. I mean, it wasn't kind of brutal. It was bloodshed and, and it was not fun. And there were a lot of people fighting very hard for their very specific interests. And I'm really curious where the Board of Realtors and all the other folks that, you know, are actually in the business of trading properties are on this whole thing because they're either standing there waiting with bated breath for the opportunity to just pounce or they're pushing back, but they're not neutral. Um, and so I'm very curious as to what the prevailing winds are. And I think if we haven't heard from those folks, we certainly want to, um, because if there isn't land speculation happening already, it certainly will very quickly if people believe that this is going to lower the barrier to development. Um, I, there's no way there won't be. Um, and so I'm, I'm very curious about, you know, just how the bigger, the larger dynamics of the real money, you know, because you talk about 5 million bucks being a lot of money to the city, it ain't nothing to a developer, nothing, nothing. You know, I, there are lots of people write $20 million check tomorrow. 
Um, so, you know, you, you, you do have some pretty big wins and prevailing forces that can change the game very quickly. Um, and they just can. Um, so I, I want to be very mindful of what, 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 what's in the bottle when we're rubbing it. <laughs> so they, uh, so, and that's not fear-based. I actually, I think that's, that's welcome. That's what you want. That's what we need. We need somebody to come in and write a big check and do something like Windsor town green, if that's what we want. Um, but if it's not, you better make damn sure that that's not what you're building into it. Um, yeah. I think the other thing that was in Jane's, in Jane's, uh, letter, which we, if you guys, if Serge, if you want to, I'd be happy to pull it up and we can look at it or you guys could read it. But I think one of the things that she talked about, which is in the meeting or in, that was uh, part of Ben's webinar really talked about some of the things that the state is doing, which is taking away a lot of the local control mm -hmm. over projects, especially affordable housing projects. And those are things that we really need to pay attention to when we're focused on this type of work. And part of the reason that we're doing this type of work is so that we pre-plan some of the things that we know we want so that it's in there and there's a path forward, but it's already it's already laid out instead of having to just get forced, um, basically having our review authority taken away in a lot of yeah. cases. And, and that's getting more and more. It's not getting less and less. There's a few more bills, but the, he talks a lot about that. And I, I'm not an expert on all of it. There is out there. There's a lot out there, um, but that's what I think would be helpful too, to kind of get the understanding of what we're trying to do and what we're dealing with um, from a state level. Too. Yeah, and that's that is my so, understanding of what we're looking at. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do we have input from the board of realtors? People like that? Mm -hmm. I mean, do yep. we have, yeah. They, Who are they yeah. inputting to? Because they're not inputting to us. <laughs> that's it. So who's where where so where we've had a couple document? of different meetings? I'd like to see their document. Um if yeah, you have vested interests that are submitting material to other other groups. I don't I know that we've gotten a formal a formal um, feedback from them, from the Board of Realtors. I don't know that we have, but I know that we've spoken with several realtors about this and there's been presentations at uh, groups that included multiple different realtors. So um, that's, that is something that we've, we've reached out to. And a lot of work was done specific to that in the infill plan as well. Um, and there was a lot of support for this type of um, sure there was. so I, I wouldn't say that I think as far as I've heard it's a positive for landowners in the area that it would be helpful because it really gives them a lot more options um, than they have available to them right now well that's exactly it yeah you, you are it's going to be a magnet for you know investment and the question is is you know who and how much and yeah, okay. just making sure that exactly making sure that we yeah. get it right. What are you what are you what are you guarding against functionally? Where are your guardrails? I mean, I call it the railroad tracks. You gotta lay them out. If you don't lay them out, people just it's just a giant turf track. So that's my so do you guys want me to pull this back up or do you guys <laughs> wanna what what's your thoughts? Please. Which one? So essentially this top green part is gonna kind of be our recommendations. Well, I think this is just to get you guys, this, what I put in here is just to kind of get you thinking about what the different policies are and how they might relate to these things. I don't think that these are necessarily, I mean, I think that this one clearly is related to this policy here, but yeah. I think that the question is what would be a proposed modification to strengthen this policy to support this? I, that's yeah. kind of what I'm, what I'm getting at. Now there's going to be some things that are more just, like like this that I put here would like more clarification on how projects will be approved with this plan. So I think that when you watch that video from Ben, this is going to give you some more understanding about that. And I think when the form-based code comes out, you're also going to have obviously a much clearer picture of this. So uh, this isn't really part of the gateway plan itself. Um, you won't see that in the policies 
do you see what I'm saying? But you'll see that in the form-based code when it comes out and you'll get more information from Ben there. So there's not really a policy here to, um, there's not really a policy here that would address this. But same thing here. We'd like to hear more from renters and populations that will suffer if we don't address the housing need. That was just something that came up in our in yeah. our conversation. So there's not really a policy. These are just things I wanted you guys to start thinking about that that had been brought up in the past at different meetings. So I like that. So, I mean, when we talk about making recommendations to the council, we're going to say we recommend that we, we're, we're, you know, what it looked like that you look into this, that you look into including a condo opportunity for more diverse ownership, or would it be like, we recommend that you change this verbiage to this verbiage? Like, well, how you, so what I would suggest, and this, this is what I would just, this is my suggestion is looking at the land, like start, starting with policy chapter one, which is land use and going through the different policies and reviewing them. And then if you find one that's related, because you will, I mean, there's a whole, a whole bunch of different policies as you go through, if you're not finding one that's specific to this, then let's go ahead and add that under housing, for instance. Like, is there not a policy that really promotes this or that doesn't address this? Let's make sure that there's one in there. And so then what your recommendation would be is instead of um, a proposed modification to an existing policy, it would be, I would start down here and I would say, new proposed policy and under housing policy chapter three we recommend that there's something that's very specific to this goal that the committee has has um expressed amanda go ahead i saw your hand raised i'm sorry i just saw it oh yeah just um one one other bullet point we might consider and and um i know there'll be certainly opportunities to address it in the language and the policies and the plan itself but is um the treatment of light industrial in the zone i know that that's been kind of a recurrent theme um and and what kind what kinds of businesses to you know you also attach that bit about employment mm -hmm. um so kind of defining that a little more we might want to add that to our list of things like better definition of light industrial or what are you thinking yeah more more specific about what compatible light industrial type businesses might be included or, or. oops okay i can't type when people are watching me so just <laughs> bear with me I can't type. I can't spell. It just makes me nervous. <laughs> okay, we know we'll get sorted out. But so that's as far as and I can send you guys this template so that you have it to kind of go through when you start to go through it on when you start to go through each chapter and um, and then, you know, leave space for you know what I'll do. OK, here's what I'll do. I'll create something similar to this that goes through each of the chapters that you guys can go through. And if there's not a proposed modification, you can just leave it blank. If there's something that you think should be modified in each of these, then go ahead and input it here. And if there's something new, I'll leave a section. So after each category, so after each policy chapter, I'll leave a category so that you can put in a new implementation measure. If you feel like there's something new that should be included and you're strong, you know, you feel really strongly that there's something that is missing, I'll leave that blank so that you guys can include that. Does that sound like a plan? And then I'll send this over to you guys so that you can do the work and I'll put the page number so you know where to find it. Okay, thank you. This will be helpful for the other committees too, actually. So it'll just give me a lot to do tomorrow. I'll try and get it to you as soon as possible though, because I know you guys are going to want to start working on it um, before we meet again. And we're going to try and meet, you guys said on the 21st. Is there anything else that I can send you that you think would be helpful while you're going through this? I, I just have the three, the, you know, a meeting invite for our special session, uh, the template, which I think would be save us a lot of time because we won't be doing that much apples and oranges work when we actually meet I'm trying to, you know, figure you out. You can compare it. You guys can all compare. Yeah. And then the, the YouTube link for Ben's talk. Okay. That's what I have, you know. 
Okay, YouTube link, meeting invite, template. And do we want to, do we want to meet over Zoom? Is everybody able to pull up their spreadsheet if you share your screen on Zoom or do we want to try and meet in person for this meeting? That's going to be my next thing because I don't know how easy it's going to be for each of us to share screens and compare notes. I, th I mean, I like I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm still not technically savvy, uh, but I would still <laughs> it would it, for me, it would work easier just because I'm coming from Eureka and five o'clock traffic may make me later than we'd want to start. And I, I am able to share screens and all. I don't know how everybody else is set up, though. I can share mine as well. Yeah, I'd like to do Zoom as well. Okay. Edith, Sharon, I'll also um, try to send, send like my template to you, um, Jen, in advance. Okay. Yeah, that way, if there's a problem, I can share it, too. Okay. That will be good. I think that'll be, I think that'll be really helpful for you guys. And also for just for us having that template that we can use with each of the committees will be really, will be great. I don't know that each committee is going to want to, and you know, there's going to be certain areas where you guys might not, I really have a lot of input into, and that's fine. You know, just skip through those. If it's something that it's like, okay, I don't really, this all seems okay. And I'm, I'm not really wanting to focus on it. I just gave you guys the employment section because it's the most related to economic development. But like we've talked about before, housing is related to economic development. Transportation is related to economic development. You guys touch on a lot of different areas. I mean, our, I debated putting in the whole arts and culture um, policy chapter too, because I really felt like there was a lot there that was related to economic development that you guys could really weigh in on as well. And so I think that there's a lot that touches there that you guys can can dig into if you just give it some time and everybody feels like the two week is enough time to, to come back with some info. And then you don't have to be finalizing it next week either. We can meet on the 21st, hopefully, and then meet again on August 2nd to finalize the recommendations. If you decide you want to do that, so that gives us some time. Linda, I see your hand. Oh, oh, you put it down. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> You'd think I'd never done this before. <laughs> That's okay. Awesome. Well, um, I, sorry, I'll raise my hand. I'm terrible with that stuff. <laughs> there's, I think there's some public comment too. So we should definitely go to public comment at some point before before we wrap up, but we don't have to, we, like I said, we still have another hour. So you guys feel free to talk so, about it all. Yeah. One more red dot up there. Maybe um, it's very vague on what assistance is. There's assistance for um, developers are required to provide assistance to res low income residents that are displaced. And then in this section, GA one F it says facilitate, facilitate the relocation of non-conforming uses. Um, I would say, you know, what what resources are available through the city? Um, slash, yeah, what resources um, for citizens and businesses um, that are impacted by this? Oh, let's see. Well, and, and citizens too, because yeah, the um, because you know, not I mean, low income is a pretty low bar. I mean, I don't know how the hell you survive in California sure. in at, at the poverty line. Um, which which one are you looking at? Okay. I'm trying to figure out because I oh right there where it says well this I was looking actually on the actual plan, but under GYA one F it says facilitate the relocation of nonconforming. Uses that yeah, are and I want to be really specific about facilitate the relocation of non-conforming uses that are incompatible with the vision, the plan vision. So that was one thing that came up that we talked about. Just remembering that during our 
during our business, pre- the business presentation, we talked about non-conforming and really mm-hmm. there is a very limited number of non-conforming businesses that we're talking about. So non-conforming is, um, and I'm sure I'll get an email from someone if I screw this up, but is, uh, <laughs> is the lumber mills and the lumber mill or mills question mark and the, um, and the store, mini storage units. So that is what's considered non-conforming. Yeah. So if you're one of those businesses, we want you to stay in Arcata and we would facilitate that in some way, shape or form with a business assistance loan, with looking and finding and connecting you with additional resources, whatever the case may be. So it's, those are non-conforming uses. So just to be yeah. clear on that. And then the other thing I really want to make sure everybody is hundred percent clear on, which I feel like um, is just important to note is that a lot of what we're looking for here is some portion of affordability in these projects. And so affordable housing that is. And if you use any, which by the way, all of affordable housing basically is um, subsidized by either state or federal funding. And if you do use state or federal funding for an affordable housing project, you are required to do a relocation plan. And that relocation plan does include financial assistance for relocating a business or a home, individual family or person that gets displaced due to the development. So just to be very, very clear, that's something that you have to do. So for instance, on the Sorrell Place project, they had to give us a, give us in the state and everybody else who funded that project, a relocation plan for the, for the, the um, Roman's Kitchen, for the business that was located on that unit, even though it was a food truck they still had to get relocation. And um, there were, I believe, two houses that were on that site as well. And same thing, relocations required. So that, you know, I know that that doesn't, it can be a different, um, it's not really clear because you don't have the relocation plan in front of you for every single project that's going to go forward, but it has to be approved by HCD or whoever the entity is. Um, And it has, there's all kinds of strict guidelines for how those work. So, yeah. But, um, okay. So, so I want to wheel this back because the, the last time that we met, there was some discussion about the businesses that are currently renting. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's when I look at this stuff, I mean, I've dealt with a lot of development. Highest and best use is slang for we can make more money if we kick you out. And um, that, uh, that transition to a higher and better use is functionally what this plan foresees that's what you want right you you want basically people to come in and develop this property so that they can have a higher income source but there's stuff in those footprints already that may not fit this incredibly limited to just uh thing of low income people or you know incompatible businesses but you could very easily find yourself you know um in a situation where you have businesses that have you know negative externalities you know, these these are things that are going to have very real impacts on the on the neighbors when these developments go in and very real impacts on businesses that, you know, may or may not get forced out. And I do think that there should be, you know, that's the unknown, right? Every business, everybody who's got their life savings tied into their business does not want radical change. And you need to give them some sort of a resource if they don't fit into the tiny little box of technically impoverished or you know, an un, a non-conforming business. And I, I, that's the, that's what I'm looking for is, you know, how do you, how do you transition the people who have helped build the city um, and make them a part of the process rather than creating an adversarial situation where they're being, you know, screwed down on it. Because there will be people to get hurt in this. There's no universe in which they're, when they're, they're on Change is never easy. Amanda, I think you had a question or or a comment back on that. Yep, you're muted. Sorry, thanks. Well, I just want to make sure that we're like portraying the plan fairly and not, you know, stoking fear that doesn't need to be stoked because this is a public meeting and just that, that developing affordable housing is like there's a reason it's always subsidized federally or by the state, right? It's not a 
it's not a money grab and and uh the plan isn't about you know creating a cash cow of arcada it's about addressing a really really crucial housing shortage that is going to exacerbate our workforce staffing needs and also make life really really unaffordable especially for marginal communities and so i think i mean my understanding of the crux of the plan is that it's about building housing so that we can have a, a community that works for everyone, not just the private landowners. And what they're getting out of it is effectively an overnight transfer of property value from the city when you change the code, right? So I just wanted to add those caveats to make sure we're not, um, of course, there's always risk with change, but that um, we're portraying our goals here accurately. Yeah, housing is definitely the the I mean, that's the reason this came from the housing element. This came from doc, you know, from our gen, our original general plan. This is something that needs, you know, we have said we would do. And, and really the goal of it is yes, housing for all different types. I and mean, that's the goal. If you read through the whole document. I wasn't trying to stoke fears just for the record, more just to plan for you know, the, the unintentional harm, because that's the nature of these things. You know, people, you, you change things from A to B and the people who were in love with A are not, may not be in love with B. And I just think that the city should have a more broad based concept of what it is to provide assistance to the citizenry that's ne that, that is impacted negatively or positively. Um, uh, and, and that's my concern that it, functionally, it's not just, you know, sorry, you don't fit the model. So you're on your own. Um, and that's, that's my, that's my, my concern. Anybody else want to weigh on, on any of this or add anything up here or, and I'll leave this just when I send this over, I'll go ahead and just leave all of this here so that you can kind of have that in the background and then i'll just edit this so that each policy it's clear that this is you know policy one policy this one's four but it'll it'll be clear so it you'll see kind of what you're looking at more from each individual policy level when i send it over do we want to open it up for public comment or did you guys have more Discussion, Serge, I don't know. Well, I think it's a huge, huge topic that we should dedicate, you know, meetings to this month. Yeah, and go through and just check on the verbiage and stuff. And I think we should come back at the next meeting with more solid notes and do we have to, and then the meeting after that, I suppose we could solidify the, our recommendations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of, that's what I think I would recommend um, is that we bring everybody, bring their notes to the next meeting, just be really prepared to dig into those notes. I'm assuming that you guys will probably have some that are very, very much compatible. And I would focus on the policies and then any additional policies that you find that you think are missing that need to be added um, just so that we're giving really good concrete feedback. Um, so, yeah. Perfect. I think if there's still interest in the public comment for these items, it would be great to take those. Yeah. Let me Let's see here. Hi, Scott. <laughs> Hey, Jen. Um, hey, committee members. I'm Scott McBain. I'm a business owner on the edge of the gateway area. Um, we have 17 employees here, um, and almost all of our um, revenue comes from out of the area. So I fall into one of those classes of, um, I'd call it a STEM business, because we are partially dependent on HSU, but certainly the technical expertise that comes out of HSU and the work that we do. Um, we bring in about $3 million into the local economy through our work. Again, most of it's coming from out of the area. So we're kind of, I don't know, I kind of consider our, our business a, a good poster child 
I would think for the kinds of businesses that we would like to encourage into the city into the future, um, because we hire a lot of local people and bring in money in from outside the area. Um, I wanted to, um, first of all, just remind you of the comments that I made on you know, March 3rd. Um, I think those are still applicable. Um, so maybe revisit those in your deliberations um, for recommendations. Um, I do want to um, kind of tie into a couple of things that um, that has been discussed. One is um, that we kind of have a, a, a guinea pig with the Sorrel project for what the gateway um, plan could entail, but on a much larger scale. One of the things that I've um, mentioned to Jen in the past is that um, for me and a lot of other people, there's kind of a gap in trust with the city on how this is going to be implemented, given that there's three staff members to do this. And this is a huge up ramp from what's um, been done to date. And again, the Sorrell project is, is, a, is a guinea pig that we should be learning from. Um, to date, nobody from the city has actually talked to us and said, hey, you guys had some concerns um, about how this project is going to affect the neighborhood um, when this was proposed during the whopping three week process that this was jammed through the city. It would really help on the trust issue if we could actually learn from the Sorrell project from the neighborhood and um, not the, to complain, um, some of the impacts we were worried about have actually been less than what we anticipated. It'd be really helpful for, for us to learn from this project. Um, but I just don't get the feeling that the city cares about this. And this is kind of the emotional response given how that project was done. So um, maybe just, Jen, for you to take notes that that might be helpful for the city to do and help rebuild some of the trust. Um, that wasn't what I specifically wanted to talk about, <laughs> but as you mentioned it, um, it still has uh, some salt in my wounds over that whole process. And this is going to be the Sorrell project on steroids. And so that's where my fear comes from because I've already gone through this once before on a very small scale. So it'd be good to learn from this. And I can definitely learn or look at this in a clinical way. Um, I can separate my emotions um, um, as needed. But the main thing that I wanted to focus on was to reemphasize some of my comments that I made in March or in May about, um, about my concerns at the gateway, the draft gateway plan um, rightfully emphasizes um, housing and redevelopment um, that focuses on housing, but I think that it needs better balance. And I think that's what we're all trying to achieve here is a good balance um, so that it's um, you know not at one at the expense of everything else. And that's a hard thing to do. And I sympathize with you all. But it's really a combination from an economic development perspective, a combination of protection of existing um, businesses and development um, of new businesses that are beyond uh, retail coffee shop types of things in the bottom of eight story residential buildings. It's got to be more creative, um, diverse um, and strong than that. And it's really critical to have those kinds of high paying jobs to support the new residents that we're going to have. And it's a keystone to a healthy community. And I think that's what we all want into the future. So as I've said many times for council, I'm very supportive of a gateway plan, but I want, I'd want i like to see a quality gateway plan that's well thought out that we learn from what we've already done. And we really bring quality into this. So we have a quality plan, not just a plan. And that's gonna take work to do that and some, some innovative, creative thinkers and how to do that. Specifically towards your um, potential recommendations um, to, to better emphasize um, businesses and job protection and development and the associated healthy community that comes with it. Um, there's some really good information and text in, um, in the um, chapter, the guiding principles for, that you should probably look and see. I mean, those are kind of aspirational things. Um, but then when you go to the employment chapter where you get to the, the meat, um, the things that will actually be enforceable, it's pretty anemic um, and underwhelming. So one thing that I'd suggest doing to better emphasize the business part of this is to change the title from employment to be economic development. Um, that includes not just employment, but also jobs and businesses and those sorts of things to kind of refocus on a bigger picture than just employment and the three, again, fairly anemic um, policies that are in there right now. 
that encourage a subcommittee be formed by the Economic Development um, Committee to really kind of drill down in there. And as Jen mentioned, some of that may be rephrasing, but I think that there's a lot of um, new policies that could be developed. Again, there's some good stuff in the guiding principle for to mine from, but I think some brainstorming on that would be really helpful. Um, and I have a couple of examples, but we talk, there's talk in there about opportunity zones for, um, for certainly residential redevelopment. We should be thinking about those opportunity zones for new business development as well that's encouraged at the same level as housing. Again, I'm not de-emphasizing housing. I'm just trying to bring the business um, protection and development on the same level of importance as housing because um, that's really important for a healthy community speaking from firsthand experience. And some of those things could be um, taking advantage of Cal Poly Humboldt. I mean, it's virtually not mentioned in the draft gateway plan, STEM businesses that could come from that. Um, there's just like a huge amount of opportunity there. And it'd be great if a subcommittee could really dive into this in more detail to take advantage of those opportunities. And it could be something like you know, looking at a business you know, a opportunity zone that focuses on a business part concept like on Erickson Way um, that doesn't necessarily need to have seven stories of residences on, on top of it. Another thing that was critical for our business is we grew up in the Creamery District and then the little one of the little buildings out on West End Road as incubator um, businesses. We wouldn't be here without the Creamery building and that opportunity um, as a business incubator. So again, that isn't a term that's even mentioned in the draft gateway plan that was critical for us and, and other new businesses. Um, and then the last comment, again, this kind of builds on some of the things that Walt talked about is we still don't really know very well in a quantitative way um, what we would like the gateway area to be when it grows up based on a, a quantitative community survey um, to inform the city. And at the last city council meeting, I recommended that the city fund a, a more quantitative survey specifically that focuses on the gateway area to ask some of these key specific questions um, so that we're all better informed on what the city wants, um, city residents, um, the community wants in this area. And if the city council, if we're able to convince the city council to move forward with this, we'd really like the Economic Development Committee to um, weigh in on this and have some of those survey questions focus on the economic development in this area. So I'd, hopefully you guys can consider some of these recommendations um, for your recommendations to um, city council. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Okay. Hi, Patricia. Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Oh, okay. Great. Thanks. Um, so yeah, it's it's kind of hard to go um, up after Scott because he's he just kind of nails a lot of the things. Um, some of my concerns as well, and and um, so, anyways, I will go ahead and, and maybe fumble through and try not to to restate some of the same things. But um, I'll start with um, the Plan West proposal for the Gateway Project in that um, they had scheduled um, in the, their task chart uh, in the proposal. Um, it, in that it lists both the draft Gateway Plan and the draft for the form base codes were supposedly supposed to be released together. Um, so I think if they were released together, both the draft of the gateway plan and the draft of the form based codes, it would have alleviated a lot of this um, concern and vagueness. And, um, you know, the committees are being asked to give their recommendations. And I think they you would as the Economic Development Committee and the other committees and the Planning Commission and the City Council could probably really get down to more specific um, recommendations and really um, if, if the form based codes were there to clarify a lot of the questions that we've all had, the community and the, um, the committees and the commission. So um, I'm hoping that um, when the draft for um, the um, 
form based codes is actually released that you, your committee, as well as the other committees will have the opportunity to come back and um, give more input, more recommendations based on what was released in the form base, the draft of the form base. Just, codes. I'm going to just pipe in here and just let you guys know right. that the form base code will be coming back to the committees that is already in the plan. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I was hoping, I was assuming that you would be able to. Um, I was, it would have been nice if they were released before. I think it would have alleviate, alleviated a lot of the um, the confusion. I know that the draft of the gateway plan is very vague. Um, and I think the form based codes is what really clarifies that. So, um, and then to go on, um, hopefully um, to kind of, um, Jane mentioned Ben Noble's presentation on form-based codes. I would like to second um, you guys uh, listening to that because it was very informative, answered a lot of my questions and a lot of other people's questions. And then hopefully you'd be able to ask pertinent questions directly to Ben Noble as com committee members. I'm not sure how that works, but that would be useful if you're allowed to. Um, in the May 12th economic development meeting, I know Walter asked for clarification between the light industrial and light manufacturing um, when it comes to the land use codes. Um, that would be really, uh, I'm still confused about it. I know, Jen Dart, you stated um, five to six businesses were considered non-conforming in the gateway area, the mini storage and the mills. Um, it was under my, a lot of our impression, other people's impressions that others would be considered incompatible and non-conforming, um, such as Amerigas, wing inflatable, car washes, data center, auto body, auto body shops, the mechanics, et cetera. So um, yeah, just clarification on that um, would be um, helpful too. And um, I really support rezoning um, adding new housing with the rezoning um, and adding that housing element, but also keeping all existing commercial uses um, that fall under, whether it be the light industrial or the light manufacturing of um, what's already here existing, um, just keeping that usage going. So it opens, keeps open the door for future um future businesses to come in that fall under that category. Um, I liked uh, on the May 12th, um, your May 12th meeting, um, I know Amanda brought up the building equity in housing and instead of, and incentives for home ownership. That was a concern for me and a lot of other people, um, whether that be through community land trusts or condos or small home communities. Um, I know Jen Dart mentioned the co-op models and then, you know, things such as Habitat for Humanity, but um, it'd be nice um, if there's some language that really emphasizes that a little bit stronger. Um, and then there's a kind of a rough quote from Walter um, about shuffling out um, existing um, to make room for the new. And so, yeah, gentrification was the first um, kind of gut response that came to mind when I first read the draft plan. So um, it'd be nice um, to kind of clarify that. And, um, and then also, um, you know, kind of, I, I kind of keeping housing costs for, you know, residential and business owners and future home costs lower. Um, I think that is, um, that's kind of a concern of any way we can really um, keep that in play and really strengthen that would be great. Um, I'm a home homeowner and um, I'm kind of a little concerned when I hear that the impact of the area being rezoned will increase my property values or increase property values overall in the area. Um, I think this is what will increase those um, those housing costs for people. Um, so as a homeowner and a property owner, you know, I'm against kind of my, my property values being um, increased just for the sake of all those who I, I wish, you know, can, I wish well in our community. Um, also, there's a concern um, 
for uh, Walter brought up the concern for um, the existing conforming uses, um, can, protecting existing conforming uses from the new residential complaints that might come about from like the noise and activity. So I'd like to um, kind of remind you of that and hopefully uh, and those, you know, incorporate some of those insurances in the language as well. And um, so anyways, I could go on <laughs> and on, but um, these are just some of my, my concerns with this plan. plan. I, I really, really want to see infill here. I really acknowledge the lack of housing that Arcata um, has. It's getting like horribly worse with each year or each month it seems so um any way that we can bring housing in would be great but i would really like to protect the the jobs in our industry as well because i think that's is like scott says it's should be an equal component to this so thank you for hearing me out um and um, i'm really glad that you're doing this a, a, a special um session uh come on coming up on the 21st so thank you thanks patricia Patricia. All right. So, do we have to vote to have this special meeting, or can we just make well, it? Can we have some commentary on the public comment? Oh, you, right. you have. The there's actually, there's actually more public comment. So we're oh. not, we're not done yet. I don't know if you guys want to limit that so that you have some time to talk at the end of this. You might want to. I should have mentioned that before. You can time it if you'd like, but we're at 6.30 now, so. Okay, well, let's definitely hear some more. As you know, there's hands raised. Okay. Are comments limited to three minutes? During you can do, you guys can set those time frames. We obviously have not done that right now, but you definitely have the ability to do that. I just wanted to let you know, you only have you know, about a half hour left. And if you want to talk about some of the comments that came up, you might want to leave yourself some time to do so, so. I, I would so, love three minute caps. Yeah. Okay. Jane, go ahead. Okay, one of the things I just want to comment right off the back is that is that is unfair. If several people get to talk for five minutes, then everybody ought to get to talk for five minutes. I understand it's, Nice to be done by seven o'clock, but on the other hand, you need to hear what people have to say. Um, Jane, I'll just if, jump if, in. If I'm sorry to, do it. to be yeah, unfair, but just realize that after a while, the ability to digest and then provide meaningful integration and feedback also is compromised. So I understand that. that. I do because I don't sit well for two hours either. Um, <laughs> the focus disappeared and my dog likes to go for a walk. Okay, to be quick, um, I think you, and I think it would be desirable, Jen, if you could give them all links to the current state laws that are affecting us and what may be coming down the road, because those laws are what require us to provide, as you will learn from Ben Noble, those laws require us to basically establish objective standards because we can no longer say, I don't like that project because I don't like its facade. You can't use subjective standards in, in large housing projects. So you need to understand that. And when you listen to Ben Noble, he discusses the laws a little bit. And then at the end, he gives us various review options. Um, but those laws and options only apply to uh, residential properties. So we have flexibility with respect to non-residential properties and they can go through the normal process, et cetera. That process issue is extremely important to understand because we can distinguish between kinds of properties and kinds of pro review process. Um, the issue about ministerial review versus maintaining uh, city council and planning commission review and public input is totally, as I understand it, based on residential properties, uh, multifamily properties, large residential properties over a certain minimum, which I think may be 27 units. I'm not sure. That That's a little unclear, but you need to understand what these issues are. 
And that's why it's so important to listen to Ben Noble's uh, presentation. But Jen, if you could get them links to the pertinent statutes, that would be extremely helpful. The other thing I want to point out is, as far as I know, there's been no quantity. I want to back up what um, Scott said. There has been thus far no quantitative survey of gateway owners, let alone the community, in terms of we don't have statistics. We did opinion surveys. What would you like to see? They're kind of visionary things. But there's no hard data there. I can't say, OK, we had um, five or 800 respondents or more like we did with the Gate Closet Improvement Task Force. And here were their recommendations. Here's what they wanted. We could categorize and we could put data on it. And we could, we could basically say, this is what the community wants. And these are the priorities from the community's perspective. So I think it'd be very important somewhere along the line here for you to consider conducting a survey of at least gateway business owners. That is an option you have. You could do it. It's not hard to do. Um, and you could do that yourselves as a committee. We did that historically over uh, with Valley West. And you could do it again if you so chose. So um, I thank you all for listening. I appreciate everything you're doing. And um, feel free to contact me if you have any questions about past history or any other things. I would like to be able to get comments out to you, if pertinent, before you have your next session, uh, ideally not 20 minutes beforehand. So thank you for indulging me. Thanks, Jane. Uh, hello. Hi, Chris. Sorry, I was having a hard time unmuting myself for some reason. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, it's uh, it's, a, it's always grappling with for me. I I relearn it every time sometimes. But uh, so yeah, Chris Richards here, and um, I'm a local businessman, resident, uh, RGA uh, leader, or in, involved with the local group that's trying to help you know make things better with with the with the draft plan and and all of that um i don't have a lot um to follow up with on what everybody else said because they did a good job i just uh want to really emphasize kudos for this group to show the reflection from what people are saying and showing the vision that you're you know stepping up and going to going to uh commit to uh subcommittee and work through all these details. And I, I really feel confident with this group that uh, uh, good things are going to come out of out of this. Um, also, kudos for Jen for helping set set up uh, process and templates to, to help enable you guys to make make it a little bit easier for you. That, that's all re really wonderful, Jen, that you're that you're uh, putting that together. Um, a couple of critical things um, back to the engagement report and all the data for what we really want as a community and where we're going. I, I, I agree with Scott and Jane both that uh, we need some extra survey work done and maybe uh, looking towards Cal Poly's that could maybe help out or, you know, there, there's community members that I'm sure would be willing to help out. But I, I think that as we move towards you guys putting in recommendations and the actual form, you know, form-based code drafts being drawn up, uh, that that information would really be uh, important to have alongside that. So when you guys reevaluate the form-based code drafts, we, we can really get this fine-tuned well. And you know, everybody, all the other committees are doing it all, so it's it's quite elaborate. But uh, I enjoy what I'm seeing tonight with this. This group, as always, um, I've only been in this for a short while, but uh, it brings confidence to me that uh, the process is is working well. Um, so anyway, um, I think I'll leave it at that. There's probably other folks and you guys need extra time to give us feedback and uh, get back with your evening life. So thank you so much for listening. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris.
Oh. Moonlight, I have to promote you to a panelist so that you can talk. Progress. Are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Okay, great. This will be really super quick. Just thank you so much for your service tonight, everybody. I really appreciate it. And uh, I, this is mostly to staff. Um, I totally understand the potential to, that we're going to be scheduling a lot of special committee meetings, possibly for the next few months going through this recommendation process. And I just want to just remind the staff that overlapping committee meetings does become a barrier for engaging the public. So um, I just kind of, I know it's sometimes unavoidable, but I was hoping that um, as we progress through this over the summer, um, trying to ascertain recommendations from different committees, please consider overlapping committee meetings as a last resort rather than a viable first option. So I just kind of wanted to Toss that out there and keep that in the back of your mind if you could. So thank you so much and and appreciate everything. Yeah, I don't think our I don't think our meeting will overlap. I'm gonna double check, like I said, with um with HLC with Delo and make sure that she's gonna be able to get in her time. Usually their theirs is only an hour. So hopefully it won't. But thanks. Okay, and we have one more. Um Fred, I think I think you're calling user one, and I. Or can you hear? Can you hear us? Can you talk? I yes, think this it, is Fred Wise. There, we got you. You're here. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, a variety of things, and I'll try to be quick. Uh, Walt, uh, you mentioned functionality and deliverability. Uh, great distinction there. I use the word uh, projection and probability. What's the likelihood of something happening? If the probability of something happening is 20% or 30% or 40%, then it's not a plan. I think you understand what I'm saying. Um, Jen, you mentioned the templates. Uh, I would like to get a copy of that template, so that's okay. Um, Jane's comments, uh, particularly uh, is on her chart, it's E2, uh, notification of prospective developers and occupants about uh, what may happen in their neighborhood. It's sort of like a right to farm rule. I would like to see that in writing as part of the plan that's required to be given to developers or future occupants, uh, but something, an actual codified page, okay? Um, the um, Fred, phrase of uh, the jobs... Fred, yep. can you repeat that from the beginning so I, so I pick up what you're putting down here? You're, just that last concept. From, from, uh, 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 the, that um, Jane, the right in, in her comments, it's... Yeah. yeah, it's E2. It, it's, it's similar to the right to farm rules, where someone who builds next to a farm is going to have to put up with the sound of tractors and the smell of manure. Uh, there, are, there are strong laws about that. Uh, so what we have here is similar, that if, if, if a developer builds an apartment that's next to an existing business, the people in that the, – Jane, Jane talks about this the, – the people who live there shouldn't have the right to complain. That's just the nature of living next to something that already exists. And it, it, it can't just be a promise. It has to be something actually in writing. Uh, I don't know what the laws are and what the codes would be, but I, I recommend that that's not just be something that's urged but, or, or encouraged, but is actually in, in, in writing. Okay? Thank you. Yeah, thank, thanks, Walt. Um, there's a lot said about jobs will not be lost because of um, something the city does or new coding. Uh, they'll be lost because of the landlords. Um, the landlords, and, and, and as, as some of you have mentioned. Um, so I think it's like it's a little disingenuous to say that jobs will not be lost or businesses will not be moved. I regard relocation funds as the absolute last resort. Um, we've talked about... Um, moving out to a new industrial park out in West End Road. Any business that's moved from the Gateway area out to the, this new industrial park will be one fewer business that could otherwise have gone into that industrial park. Um, these things are, uh, you know, they're kind of obvious when you, when you think about them. Um, Serge, you mentioned uh, the opportunity for ownership and equity investment opportunities, condos and the like. Uh, that is a strong feature that... I promote, um, there's an article on my arcada1.com website that talks about home ownership and the percentages and how bad the percentages are. At the Planning Commission meeting uh, last Tuesday, 
David Loya came very close to saying that there will be no home ownership, owner-occupied opportunities. Um, I think that there's no teeth, there's no existing laws, there's no basis. Uh, we're looking at essentially what's a myth in this gateway plan that I like to do something about. I think we'd be lucky if we get 5% in this area. What I propose is we have to do something that's extremely bold and actually make new law here in Arcata. I think that, as I said at the Planning Commission, I think Arcata is ready for it. Or not, not Arcata. I think the, the state of California is ready for it, and I think we could actually start here. Um, some other things, um, there's a reference to Table 5, which is on page 50 of the, um, the Gateway Draft Plan, and it, it's a percentage a floor area that's not residential. I encourage you to look it up. Uh, they have different percentages for different zones. The Gateway Neighborhood Zone is, they, they allot as 2% non-residential. That's nine square feet per resident. It's not an even enough to have a neighborhood store. Can I, um, Fred, can I, I this, clarify? Yeah, go, yeah, go ahead. I, I just really yeah, want to please. clarify yeah. that those are targets. Yeah. They're right. not regulatory requirements for individual development projects. They're a broad goal. And I also want to put in there that in market condition, if market conditions and our social demand change significantly in the lifetime of this plan, then these targets may not continue to be applicable. So I just really, really want everyone to be clear that those are targets. Those are goals. Those are something that we think would be appropriate, but those are not regulatory requirements. So just, I just want to throw yeah, that yeah, out there. Thank, yeah. No, thank you, Jen. Um, regardless, I would like the committee to look at those figures and suggest updates to those figures, even as targets, okay? Um, the, um, uh, when you read through the draft, um, or as you read through the draft, I, I suggest also looking for verbiage that you find either offensive or incorrect. On, on page um, five of your packet is, is the uh, jobs and entrepreneurial activities. The first line says, the majority of the plan area is currently zoned for light industrial uses and provides over 100 middle-income job opportunities. I would suggest that line just be struck from the plan, but um, because it's there's no measurement of 100 middle-income job opportunities, and it's zoned light industrial because it was tried to make sense of what Arcata already was. It, it's a historical zoning. Um, there's uh, about 106 houses in the Gateway area. Um, the gateway, the general idea is, of course, residents, and the the um, uh, there's a lot of call for buildings that are have the ground floor as commercial, and then other floors above that. I think that while that's commendable, and I'm I'm in favor of housing, there should be some way of making commercial buildings also, uh, office buildings, uh, and and not not by through a use permit, but but by design, and at the same time. The commercial spaces, uh, if, we, if this can be specified in the form-based code, they can't all be just for coffee shops and stores and things. They're, they should be designed either with um, uh, you know, commercial electricity or, or the spaces. I don't know about this. I just know that we don't want uh, just small um, coffee shop type things. We want to have opportunities for any kind of a business. Um, a big issue with me is parking and how that relates to uh, economic development and business. The um, gateway plan call, it, it, they, they state that there'll be ample on-street parking uh, to minimize the need for off-street parking and parking lots. But when you actually look at the, the procedures or, or, the, or, the, or what's proposed, some of the parking is just terrible. Um, the worst, uh, if, if, for instance, uh, past the creamery on uh, – on 8th Street and 9th Street, number and, and again, these are these are targets. This, this hasn't been worked out because we haven't seen the form-based code yet. But but in the drawings in the draft, uh, there's a block where there's currently 23 spaces in the new plan. There's nine spaces uh, on K Street between 8th and 9th. There's currently 16 spaces in the in the draft plan in the drawings. It shows two spaces. So I'm I'm not trying to promote car use, but there has to be some parking for businesses. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, thank you very much. Um, if you want any of this in writing, I'd be happy to put it. You can contact me. Uh, Jen knows how to contact me or through my arcata1.com website. There's a contact form. 
And um, again, to repeat what everyone else has said, I really appreciate what you're doing and the thoughtfulness that you're putting into this because uh, between you and housing, it, this is the core of the whole gateway plan. Thanks very much. Thanks, Fred. And I'll send you that template when I'm done with it, hopefully before Friday. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Okay, EDC. That's it, right? Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Go ahead, Amanda. I think you have your hand raised. Just to acknowledge the public comments and say thank you to everyone for phoning in and sitting in with us and um, just to assure that, you know, these issues are going to be forefront on our minds when we're doing our review and filling out the templates and particularly want to highlight the point about what kind of businesses are incentivized by the plan is so well taken. Uh, we have really, really low unemployment in our region right now. It's like 2.9% last quarter. It's far below um, what our nation sees. And, but what we do have is a really disproportionately high number of people who work full-time and don't make a living wage. It's like 9% higher than the rest of the nation, the numbers I've seen in these for Humboldt County. And so this concept of providing wage upgrading opportunities beyond the chance to be a barista, right? And um, uh, those that attract those growth sectors that that pay higher wages. It's so well taken and it'll definitely be something that's on my mind and along with the equity building opportunities, which is an issue that's so dear to my heart. So thank you for highlighting those tonight. And uh, I just, one little thing is that I did actually get a survey um, that I think the city had done about the vision for the gateway but I didn't ever see results from it. So I, I don't know, maybe Jen, you have more information about that, but um, certainly it's something we can explain uh, or um, explore more in the future. So yeah, thanks everyone. Yeah, I think that's in our draft. Um, I think that was in, those were in our draft engagement plan, which I can send out to you guys too. I'll just add that to my list. And it went to city council two, maybe two meetings ago. So yeah, I'll send it over so you have it so it's fresh in your mind. Awesome. Anybody else like to make any more comments? Yes. Uh, um, I actually had a couple of things um, just so that they're not lost. So Scott um, was talking about um, business assistance and we do have a number of you know sbdc redac aedc um i don't know to what extent they've been looped in on stuff like this but the ability to provide um to look for um because ross is great at finding grant money to like you know create things out of nothing um i mean the ability to uh, for us to actually explore economic development as a fundamental component of this um, because you're talking about redeveloping a chunk of the city for specific, you know, rebuilding, um, I think has a lot of potential, especially when Amanda's talking about, you know, trying to create better, you know, better wages with the data center going in here. And I do not know to what extent we've got, you know, that's actually going to improve local connectivity because some of that stuff's just like, you know, you're on the freeway, but there's no off ramps. Um, <laughs> the, uh, but, uh, you know, I I work from home now. I used to drive Eureka every day. I could be doing my job from anywhere in the world. Um, and I look into the redwood trees. I love it. This is a fantastic place to live. And well, I'm sure I, just, I have one question. I'm sorry. I just yeah. want to clarify. Are you talking about the data center itself, the one here in your arcade? Are well, you talking I, yeah, about I the just, fiber, yeah. the fiber coming in? The Both. new I mean, I think the, the data center, data I think, is really just like a, because of the fiber, right? I think the data center is just like a like a cloud storage kind of thing. I don't think yeah. it, I don't think it has, but the fiber is what you're talking about. I think for yeah, because the yeah. data center is here because of the fiber. You wouldn't have it without it. So at least, yeah. Um, so things like that, actually, you know, not just being business being a passive concern or, you know, the threat of against business, but actually using this as um, an incubator, um, I think has a lot of potential. And I think, you know, actively engaging um, because as, as mentioned by a number of people, business feels like it's, you know, the, the, the stepchild of this whole process, um, and not necessarily considered a priority. And I do think, you know, that that's not, doesn't have to be that way. 
Um, it's just how people feel. And oftentimes how people feel is a pretty good metric of how the process is rolling. Um, and I think Jane mentioned a survey of businesses. I think that fits right into it. Um, I think that um, uh, the E2 rules, I thought that was appropriate. Um, and I'm not sure about a legal requirement to ensure home ownership. I don't know how that all fits together. Um, but I do um, key into what Serge was saying about, um, you know, essentially the opportunity for cooperative housing like you've got behind uh, Valley West. Um, I know that was a long ago project and it created a lot of drama at the time. Um, so I don't know that that was necessarily smooth, but maybe we've learned from the, 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 pa the, the past. Um, and that there is a business model for that. And that's another thing that, you know, an AEDC redact kind of thing. And I'm on the AEDC board, so I don't want to, you know, pretend that I'm not, but I'm just mentioning that as like resources because they're out there and I don't care who does it. Um, it's, you know, there are, there are people out there and it's a win-win. So, um, yeah, that's all I got. And it sounds like I just got an email from Layla that September, the September meeting will work for her. So I'll put her slated for the September meeting. So that'll be helpful to have SBDC come and talk to us about kind of what they offer. And we work with AEDC and SBDC all the time. The city also does have a business loan program um, and a micro enterprise loan and grant program that we run, that we have funding for. So yeah. Currently. And incorporating that into this, you know, not just like it's out there if you know about it, but like actively saying, part of this program is to facilitate, create, you know, to, to do that. The one thing I didn't mention, and then I'm going to shut up, is parking. That is not a small issue. You're, you're moving a ton of people in. You're reducing the number of parking spaces. I don't know how, you know, I go see things at the uh, Playhouse all the time. Um, you need parking. The oyster, I mean, people have to park some. So I know that's an issue and a hot button one, but can't have businesses and no place for people to park. That's another thing the state is going to talk to you all about. I'll send you some links. Jane wanted me to do so. I will be happy to. They don't love parking. <laughs> I know we all love parking, but the state is really, uh, really coming down on that too. But I'll send you some info so you guys have that also. Um, anything else? No, Serge, you ready to? Yeah. Um, yeah, so go back to my other question. Do we need to vote to make the meeting or can we just make the meeting by agreeing on it or do you have to make it? Why don't you go, go ahead and vote to make the special meeting? That'll just be easier than it's there. So if you can, somebody can. All right. Is there anyone that would like to make a motion that we make a special meeting? Well, I'll make a motion that we have a special meeting on July. What was our date? 12? No. 21st. 24. July 21st second. at 5 p.m. Any second? Sub meeting? I'll second. All right, lovely. And then Linda, would you like to make a vote on the meeting? Oh, you're asking me, Serge? I'm sorry. Yeah. She seconded. Yeah, I seconded. Yes. Oh, I'm seconded? sorry. Yeah. Okay. I thought Amanda seconded. I'm sorry. I'm in favor. You're in favor? Okay, lovely. Mm -hmm. Monique, are you in favor? I'm in favor. Okay, great. I as well am in favor. Um, so we'll make that special meeting. We'll do our homework before. We'll come with well-organized notes, is whatever that means for us. Well, do you have your hand raised again? No. Um, and I'll yeah. try and get you guys that template um, by Friday. Okay, great. Because I'm my day is insanely packed tomorrow, but I'm hoping I can work on it Thursday. And all of my grant reports are due by the end of this month. So I'm going to take a deep breath and busy, busy time. get busy. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. Thank you for all your hard work. Always. Thanks, you guys. See you Thanks, in a couple weeks. All right. We'll call it adjourned at 6.55 p.m. See you guys in a couple weeks. Thanks, everyone. Bye.